What are you? <gasps> You've been shot. <sighs> yeah, totally. Hold on a sec. <laughs> Oh, that's not natural. That's not part of God's plan. Whew, man. Poop my pants. What? Yep, right at the end there. Whew. Here's your coffee. Uh, it's good. It's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. Oh, what is that? Sh my pants. Oh. Today on Film Right, we push a bullet through our forehead. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes mystery out of the effects techniques. Going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and last week we showed this. And a lot of people rightfully pointed out that we should have had a bullet coming out of his head. One person even commented that he didn't think we could pull it off. Don't tell me what I can't do. Which didn't bother me, but I figured we'd take a stab anyway at making Josh's forehead poop. Ew. I know, right? This effect was a mixture of practical and digital, which is my favorite kind of effect. They always feel more rooted in reality and sell a lot better. So we shot everything we needed with Josh with a piece of blue tape on his head where I wanted the wound to go. Then I kept all the lighting as is, and in that same spot, I set up a piece of cardboard on two stands. You can also see that I painted the board blue. This isn't to key it later. I knew we'd be masking out in the end, but the brown of the cardboard is too close to the red and the flesh colors. So I wanted something that would give us a really good separation to work with later. Next, I put a small hole the size of a bullet in the board, which I happen to have an empty nine millimeter shell casing lying around because Texas. So I used that to figure out how big the hole should be. Then once I had the hole, just like last week, I grabbed some nose and scar wax to create a wound on the board. And I did forget to mention last week that when working with nose and scar wax, you really wanna have some mineral oil. Put a small amount on your fingers to be able to shape the stuff. If you don't, it's gonna be too sticky to work with. Ew. Yeah, that's enough. So after creating the shape of the wound, just like last time, I grabbed some thick blood to finish it off with some gore. And now we need our bullet. Originally, I was just gonna buy something, but Josh and I decided to challenge ourselves and make it work with the only things that we could find lying around the office. After wandering around a bit, we looked in our prop room and found... Yes, Play-Doh. So I grabbed some Play-Doh and shaped it into a rough form that resembled a bullet after it made impact with something. Then I took those outside and spray painted them silver. I would have rather done bronze, but we didn't have it, so there you go. After that, we dipped the Play-Doh bullets in some blood and I pushed them through the wound we created, which often just looked entirely disgusting. And now we can jump into After Effects, which as always, this is my compositor of choice, but you could do this in anything, including HitFilm Express, which is free, links below. But the first thing that we're gonna do is get our track, which we will do the same same way that we did last week. So go and stand, stop yelling at me. Now once we have our track, we bring in our wound layer. And if you watch this shot, you can see that the board actually moves a bit. So if I were to do this again, I would use something more solid like a piece of wood. But the but to fix that, for this, we just stabilized the wound shot and pre-comped it. And now in this pre-comp, we will split the wound into three layers. The middle layer will be for the motion of the bullet actually coming out of the wound, and the other two will be frozen frames before and after the exit. So we'll pick the frames on the top and bottom to freeze, and then time it all up with our main footage, which we'll do by bringing that footage into the comp just so we can use it to time it all out, and then delete Josh's layer back out. Now, before we jump back to the main comp, I'm gonna go to a frame where the bullet is dropping, then copy and paste that into our main comp. We're gonna use this for the bullet dropping the rest of the way out of the frame. But now we're gonna take a quick break and then finish this effect off. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, innovator, domain.com is a place to go when that next idea hits you. When you buy a domain name from domain.com, you're taking the first steps in creating an identity and vision for your brand or idea in the world's top two premier and most recognized domain name extensions are .com and .net, which means those are the ones that are gonna help you build your brand and expand your presence online the best. And of course, domain.com is reliable, affordable, and easy to use. To give you some love, they're giving you 25% off their already affordable prices. When you get domain names, web hosting, and email, just use the coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Yeah. No, that one definitely doesn't make any sense. No? Mm-mm. <laughs> 
logo. So we're back in the main comp. But first up, we're gonna parent our wound layer to the knoll that we created from our track. Again, watch last week's episode for more on that. But now, so far, we have this. The bullet vanishes instead of falling out of frame, so we're gonna unhide the bullet frame that we grabbed, mask out the bullet and its shadow, and we have a reference frame for the speed that the bullet should be falling with the original bullet, so we're just gonna match that up with our position key framing. Then to sell it further, we're gonna feather our mask a bit, and of course, turn on motion blur. Now we want to match the color of our wound to the actor's face. To do this, first we need to get rid of the blue paper tape that we used as a tracking marker. There's a ton of ways to do this, but the one that was the best and easiest for this shot was to duplicate Josh's layer, stabilize the shot using the paper tape as the tracking point, then pre-comp this, sending everything to the new comp. Then we drop opacity, line up our shot so another part of his head is over the blue tape, then mask around that area and feather slightly. Then we're gonna parent this new layer to our track null, and there you go, no more tape. So now that that area under the wound is clear of trackers, you could either try to color correct the effect to match the skin, or take the easy way out like we did and put it in a blending mode, which was darkened in our case. To finish that off, we changed the hue and saturation slightly to match the skin even better, and there we have it. A bullet being forced out of your brain dome of your character. But that does it for us today. Check the notes below for links to gear we use and other goodies. And of course, our social channels are there as well if you want to connect with us. And if you haven't yet, make sure you click the bell down below so that you can be notified when we put up new episodes. Sometimes YouTube doesn't show you. You click that bell and you'll always be in the know. And I'll see you guys next week when I yell as you wish while falling down a hill.